Oh, hi, and welcome uh, to the channel. Uh, Timmy Talks, right? The channel where we talk old school magic. I was, uh, I was a little distracted. I'm looking at this, this crazily beautiful proxy magic card. Um, look at it. Do you recognize the cover? There's an entire deck uh, that's full of proxies like this, and each uh, card is dedicated to one of those famous movies and their VHS cover. I mean, it is just, it is so incredibly cool. I want to just give a shout out to Martin. Um, he's the person that actually showed me this deck for the first time. He came up to me. He said, hey, man, have you seen this? And he, he just gave me this box, unsuspicious looking box. I open it up. And what I find inside, I mean, it completely blew me away, as you can imagine. And then, of course, I wanted to know more. So in today's episode, we're going to dive deep into this project and of course we're going to look at every single card in this unique vhs magic the gathering deck by what name are you known there are some who call me tim welcome we are here with uh, buddy or i am joined by buddy and you're wondering who is buddy well he is an artist player and a professional welder and also the artist behind the secret lair vhs project also known as the secret lair that wizards should have made. And I believe, buddy, we're also joined by your dog. Dog as well, indeed. Yeah, I thank you for yeah. making time to have this. Thank you for having me here. I was maybe some background information. I was at a tournament last week and then um, Martin came to me and showed me this awesome altered Magic the Gathering deck and, and it was all dedicated to old VHS tapes and it's just it's a work of art can you maybe tell me like how did this project start yeah I can tell quite a lot about that um, the project started I think about two years ago um, on a different discord server where we have a lot of altar artists and one of those artists Matt actually decided to start making a few VHS cover magic cards um, and I was really inspired by those the problem was that at a certain moment Matt kind of well was missing the time and he didn't continue the project. So he basically made the Power 9, and I really love the Chaos Orb he made. And then nothing more happened. So a year went by and nothing continued to happen, um, which I thought was kind of sad. The project really needed to continue. So um, at a certain point, I decided, okay, we'll make a project of myself. Um, I'm going to make a complete deck. And, um, um, so the Chaos Orb is also made by Matt? It's also made by Matt Riddle, yes. Okay. And, and did you try to contact him? Uh, yeah, we had a lot of contact actually during the making of these uh, first cards. Uh, we tossed ideas back and forth and um, actually the whole community was involved. Everyone liked the idea. And everyone was pretty sad to see the, pro uh, the project stop. I think some of these Power 9 cards actually got out. I think you have to set yourself because the Time Twister looks familiar. I think I saw that in one of your videos. Could be. I have to, I have to check. I think I have the Time Twister, but not the whole set. Yeah, it's, it's I now I have it in front of me as well because I've got the um, the deck of course that I got. Mm. Well, that's not mine. I got to give it back. But uh, they're, yep. they're amazing cards. So th this was your starting point. So this it was my starting point. We tossed ideas back and forth on which movies to use, and um, as said, Matt got the Power Nine done, and he did an awesome job on those. They're, they're really cool. Um, so I was pretty sad to see nothing happen for a long time, and I contacted Matt, and he did send me the original files for the Power Nine. Uh, so those were included just the way I got them. And then I started making uh, my own yeah, set of cards, really. And um, I decided um, to pick a particular theme for the deck. Um, I went with the Underworld Dreams combo because Underworld Dreams was probably one of the first old school cards that really got me into old school magic. I really liked the idea behind the card. And I never actually built an Underworld Dreams deck myself. So, um, yeah, this project kind of suited like a glove to, to actually fit that Underworld Dreams team in here. And I set up a deck list to work with the deck. Yeah, how did um, you and make... then I started making cards. Yeah, how did you make a final choice with the deck list? Was it also a community thing or was it based on the type of cards you wanted to make? Uh, I watched a lot of Timmy videos. Okay. Uh, I saw some <laughs> Underworld Dreams decks come by, and I didn't like any of them, really. Um, they were all pretty nice, but not exactly what I was looking for. So I built my own deck list around Underworld Dreams, and I figured, well, since I'm going to proxy anyways, I'm going to put the Power 9 in there. Um, 
Yeah, there's no um, limit, right? You can have any card. That's not that's not a limit. So that's quite nice. Yeah. So um, I actually built the deck in um, one of these online deck constructing thingies, and I think the budget um, to build this deck completely in beta and whatnot uh, would be far over what I could afford. It's, it's like 180,000 uh, euros. So that was never going to happen. But um, actually, making a nice deck with well the VHS proxies uh, did seem to suit. So and that's can, where I started. Yeah, and can you maybe tell us like where did you get your inspiration from? How did you choose the movies that you chose? Uh, that, yeah, that was. Um, I think I spent days, if not weeks, um, making a list of the cards I would want to have in the deck, and then I tried thinking of movies that I saw in the past, movies that I saw in the VHS uh, rental stores. Um, that actually fitted the mechanic of the card or the name of the card or basically the overall feeling of the card. So for the, um, yeah, the, the Howling Mine, Indiana Jones, but the Dark Ritual, um, the Exorcist, because the Exorcist has to perform a ritual um, to get his job done. Yeah, very um, true, yeah. For recall, uh, the Wraith, which is a card that uh, keeps returning from the dead um, during the whole movie. So I really try to fit all the themes of the cards um, into the actual movie that I wanted to use for the cover. And as an inspiration, I assume you've used the, the original VHS cover of that movie? Or... Yes, yeah. indeed. I just uh, tried to find as good a copy as I could um, of the original VHS cover. Sometimes I had to upscale them a bit. Sometimes um, I had to remake like half of the VHS cover from basically nothing. Wh which um, one was the hardest to make? Like to get the material for. I, I think I think the Sylvan Library, Princess uh, Mononoke, that was a tough one to find because it's very tough to find a decent file for it. And I had to paste three or four different covers that I found on uh, the internet together. Um, I had to put all the logos in there manually, um, pretty much exchange a lot of stuff that's actually on the card and on the VHS cover because it just wasn't available in one single file. So I had to build the whole cover again. Yeah, because I know you mainly as someone who's really good at altering cards, like they're on the spot, but this takes a lot of digital work, right? This was actually one of my first experiments with digital uh, editing. Um, I don't, don't do a lot of digital editing. So it was a learning process as well. So it must have taken, how much time would you estimate that this project took you? Um, my estimate would be that um, after I found all the VHF as movies, I made a long list and I had to cut some movies from there. But after I found all the movies and I had all the material that I needed, the actual editing was like 80 hours. Wow. So that was after you have all the raw material. Yeah. It was just the editing. So then you had the digital files. Right. And then, of course, there's the next step. you got to print it. How, yes. And how does the printing that go? Process, the printing process was another challenge. Um, it was quite nice to actually meet um, a printer in Europe, in Germany, um, who is really good at what he does. Um, but I considered a long time where I wanted to have these printed, because since I put so much time in there, I figured um, only the best quality would be good enough. I really wanted good quality prints. I wanted... Um, exactly the colors the way I had them on the display. Um, and to get that done, I finally got in touch with um, Christian from Lieber Proxies. And um, he was kind enough to set up a custom color profile for his printer. So I could have exactly the colors and the shades and the intensity that I have on my display. On the final print, he even made a test print for me to look at. Um, so the printing process ran pretty really well with Libo Proxy. That was that was quite nice. Wow, that is so. Especially for you, he customized the process. Yeah, he customized his complete color setup um, to get these printed, and that was that was quite cool because you just don't get that quality from a random printer. I had these printed in China just as a test, and they don't look half as good. It's a, and it's all it's all a fan project. It's a labor of love, right? So it's really just great to hear. I think it says a lot about the old school community and all the artists involved. Yeah, people it are, is are because, just so excited about things. They just do this. Yeah, because I started this really as 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 a labor of love, as a project that came from my heart. 
And then people picked up on it and got enthusiastic as well. And they said, okay, if you ever print this, um, I want a copy. And I was like, okay, maybe this will help me. Um, so I had some, well, a rough price range that I could offer uh, with Christian and um, we talked a lot about the actual pricing and, and he gave me a discount even. So at the moment he gave me a discount, I was like, okay, I can get extra cards printed for all the people at the same price. So um, I think in the end I put like 250 euros in it from my own pocket. And the rest of all the printing came from all the people who helped me finance this. Yeah, that's amazing. And the card, the, the quality is really good. Like the card's really nice. Oh yeah, the quality is exceptional. Um, the feel of the cards, the surface and the actual weight of the cards really is um, exactly the same as modern Magic cards. O old school Magic cards are a bit lighter actually. They're like, um, I think a tenth of a gram lighter. Um, so you, you also ones... pay detail to that. You check like the weight, the overall yeah. weight. Yeah, you check the weight, you check the print process. Um, I did do a lot of uh, research on that as well just because I wanted to have the quality just spot on. And, and that's what Christian delivered me. He made these prints so perfect. I actually has, uh, had a mana drain as one of the test prints um, because it's really challenging to print this right. It has very bright colors, but it has a lot of um, gradients in the bright colors. And then it has completely opposite co uh, colors printed right next to it. So if something goes wrong in converting from a raw file to a JPEG file for printing, then those would be the areas where you would see that and the print came out perfect amazing and how many how many of these decks are made because it's a limited print run right there are 10 or something it's a limited print run um i actually had christian print me a custom back on these as well i designed um, a nice vhs um uh, card back for the magic yeah, i really cards. like the smiley sticker be oh yeah yeah that, that's great be kind rewind it, it, it's awesome it was <laughs> The sticker was on all the, the VHS tapes at a certain moment because everyone brought the VHS, uh, VHS tapes back to the store without rewinding them. Um, so these stickers became a thing and I thought, okay, let, let's put that on there. It just has to be there. I remember um, you would rent them for a weekend and then you would just try to watch them as often as possible. That was really like in your in your mind. That, that was kind of the spot. You had to watch them at, at least two or three times to get the money where, worth back. But Exactly. Uh, yeah. No, but to come back on the question, um, in the end, I had um, 11 of these decks printed. And uh, it is a limited print run. Um, it's still possible to actually order the deck from uh, Libre Proxies uh, for a single print, but they won't have the card back, for instance. Um, they'll also only be limited to 80 cards instead of the 90 cards that I got in this set. Oh, yeah, because you added some extra cards, right? And, and you have, but I'll show that. There's a little card with a list of all the movies, and it also shows the extra cards, the sideboard cards, and so that you know also as a player, oh, these cards are the extra ones I'm getting. So you can kind of... Um, yeah, that, that's it. kind of an idea that came right at the end where I thought, okay, I have everything done. I have everything set. I had the files print, uh, sent to the printer. And then I thought, hey, but um, I had some people ask me, I do recognize that cover, but which movie is that? So I printed the card with all the cards on there, with the movie on there. And I decided since I have that anyways, um, I might as well just put a number behind it, how often it's in the deck, how often it's in the sideboard, and which are the extra cards. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, for me, that was very helpful, actually. Also, my when I got the deck, uh, it was kind of mixed because uh, I just went through it a few times and I forgot, okay, what's the original deck? Which cards are sideboard? For example, you're playing two Lightning Bolts main, right? And then yep. you also printed two extra. So if you have a different decision, when you play this deck, you can choose, okay, I'm going to try it with three Bolts or four Bolts, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Emil van Dalen who said, hey, um, I really like the deck, but I want four Lightning Bolts in there. <laughs> so I thought, okay, this is going to need some customization. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He always likes those, like... Yeah. Cards. He loves lightning bolt. Um, oh yeah, maybe the, the the last question I think. Um, but thank you so much for taking time. Um, what what are your favorite cards, and and why are they your favorites? Yeah, I, I do have a few favorites indeed. Um, from the ones that Matt made, the Chaos Orb certainly is my favorite. Um, I mean, the, the movie Critters was um, it was a horrible B movie, but it, it was kind of fun to have all these strange things run around. It may be nice for the listeners to know that your dog is missing uh, is missing his girlfriend, right? Yeah, indeed. Um, just a second, I'll just um, get the dog back over here. Yeah, no worries. 
Okay, sorry about that. No, no problem. Yeah, no, it, it's a thing indeed. Um, so from the ones I made myself, um, well, Regrowth is one I really like. It's, um, uh, well, it's, it's this, this, this movie about, uh, about a guy having a strange plant hidden in his shop. And um, everyone knows uh, the newer movie cover, but I found this old one with, uh, with Jack Nicholson on it. And I really like that cover, so I thought, okay, it fits the theme, um, but it's really a cool movie, and, and hardly anyone knows this cover. I really like it, though. I think that the overall appearance of the cover is way nicer than the newer one. Is this the um, one that they also uh, turn into a plant? Uh, no, no, this is this is the Little Shop of Horrors. I don't think anyone turns into a plant there. I'm not sure, though. I'm probably mixing things up. For me, it's also kind of a... A travel back into time, you know? Yes, some, I think... Some um, movies I really know, others I've forgotten, and then I looked them up because I looked a few up. and like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's one of the things I also like about this deck, and some other people pointed that out as well, is um, these cards are not really meant for tournament play. They're, they're like proxies, all of them. And they're not really meant for webcam play because they're quite confusing. Uh, but if you sit on a table with, with someone on a Friday evening, have a few beers or a coffee, and play a casual round of magic and just using this deck and seeing all the movies come by, you get into conversations that normally hardly ever happen during a game of magic. So that's not a nice throwback retro kind of thing. Yeah. And you want to maybe want to rewatch some movies, probably a lot of them. Also possible because most of the movies I said, I, I really made a long list of movies I really wanted to have in there. And I had to like cut about 25% of them because they just didn't fit the theme of the cards. Uh, but still, there's a lot of my personal favorites in there. It's uh, Brazil is uh, also an awesome movie. Um, and actually using that on the mana drain also worked quite well. Um, yeah, and that, yeah that, the, that one was the hardest one to print, right? You told us. It, it is one of the most more difficult ones to print because of uh, all of the stuff going on on the cover. And it needs to be just spot on in the print to get... Um, to get it really nice, it's easy to screw it up. Um, I had these printed from a Chinese uh, service, as I said before, and um, they kind of made it a bit too dark, so it just doesn't look as good. Yeah, Demonic Tutor, I really like that as well. It was one of the first ones I made, but I think it came out quite nice. Um, also, again, a movie I personally like an awful lot, uh, Apocalypse Now. Yeah, that's one of those classics I think everybody knows. I think, yeah, uh, the guy with all the cameras around his neck. I mean, I like photography, so seeing all these uh, Nikon Fs and stuff is also pretty cool. Um, yeah, some other favorites. Um, Movie-wise, I would say Johnny Mnemonic is a certain favorite, but um, the cover art isn't really that great, so the card is not one of my favorites, but I did have to include it in there, and it is um, really kind of a throwback thingy. Yeah, I think the movie is so cool that that idea of, of using humans as a, a way to transport data. Yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. Where you basically you would instead of making a, a hard disk, your brain is the hard disk, and I don't know, it's funny. It yeah, I think that, nowadays uh, such movies would look completely different. Back in the nineties, that was kind of like the mindset, and uh, it's really nice to look back on that and get this kind of historical link there as well. Yeah, and I think Clockwork Orange, is that the Underworld Dreams card? Clockwork, Clockwork Orange. Orange is the Underworld Dreams, yeah. yeah. It also makes sense. It, it makes perfect sense because the movie is like this, well, retro nightmare kind of science fiction, everything is wrong thing. So having that as the Underworld Dreams referring to Julie Burroughs' original art, uh, showing, I think it's the Riffle Sticks that she shows, it, it really makes so much sense to just use that movie there. Yeah, and I think he dreams of ultraviolence, right? So He does, yeah. It kind of fits with that theme of just getting punished for dreaming basically what underworld dreams does right it does yes so super cool hey thank you thank you so much and um if people want to reach you uh for for altars or whatever how can they because you also make dice by the way we see some beautiful dice there on the screen yeah i also make dice indeed and um yeah some some altars as well it's uh i just like to do this and that but basically just make things making things is always good and and how can they reach out to you if they want an altar or dice um, I think most of the people who watch this video will probably have heard of me from one Discord server or another, or maybe um, the uh, X Points Facebook group, or uh, generally on Facebook, I'm known as Buddy. Um, okay. And I then um, I'm on 
Instagram as well, actually, um, under Lost Viking Altars. Maybe you could just add the link in the description because it has some underscores in there. Of course. Yeah, I also have dice from you that I use. So uh, it's cool. I know, I know. And I have yeah, some the, the red ones and the white ones. No, the red ones and the black ones, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you gave me a cool, the cool box with like the sea serpent theme, the yep. Viking box. That's really nice. So yeah, so I'll put the the Insta and the Facebook uh, details in there as well. And of course, you'll be at the Upton Troll Cup. Yep, I'll be at the Upton Troll Cup all three days. I'm really going to enjoy that one. Yeah, me too. Really looking forward to it. So that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, what can I say? Great project. Thank you for sharing uh, your story. And um, I think I'm now going to just have a closer look again at the cards. There's so much uh, to see still. Okay, so that was pretty cool, right? I mean, we got a chance to talk to Buddy, who made like 80% of this deck, which was awesome. He, he, he talked us through the creative process. And also really cool to know that it was a cooperation with Matt as well, who initially started the project with that Power 9 and Chaos Orb. Um, but we haven't really gone through each and every single card here. And that's actually what I want to do now uh, because it's such a special project. So what I've done, I've put the cards in order. These are all the 60 cards in the Underworld Dreams deck. And of course, after this, we'll have a look at the sideboard as well. So it's kind of a deck tech. And at the same time, I'm going to try to guess the movie. So Ancestral Recall, easy one, Total Recall. Then we've got, ooh, this one's actually a bit harder already. Uh, Balance. I remember this movie, Michael Douglas. He wants to get breakfast at the Whammy Burger and then he completely flips. Uh, it's actually a really good movie. I forgot the name though. I'm not, I've got the cheat sheet here. I've got it here. I'm not going to look though. Let me know in the comments if you know it. Then we've got Badlands, a full play set of these. Another easy one, of course. This is uh, Mad Max. The quality of these cards, by the way, it's really good. It's really thick. It's a good weight. The background. Yeah. What a what a cool project. Remember, only 10 of these made. Yeah, this is the Swamp Thing, of course. The Bayou, single Bayou in the deck. Uh, Black Lotus, a Nightmare on Elm Street. Very cool. Ah, this one, Black Vice. This is the Exorcist type movie, right? Oh, I forgot the name, but I've seen it. It's a classic. I believe there are four vices in here. One, two, three, and oh, three only, not the full four, so uh, three. Then we've got the Brain Geyser. Look at that. Now you're really out of your mind. That is so cool. I don't know what movie this is. I don't know. I want to look, but I'm not gonna. This Brain Geyser, we've got Chaos Orb, so we talked about this in the video. Actually, I haven't seen this movie. So maybe one to watch. Uh, then we've got City of Brass. Another one I think I don't know. Which movie has a golden lady in it? I only know Star Wars with the go golden droid. Don't recognize this one. I believe there are three City of Brasses in here. I think three is also about the max what I would play in a deck. Then we've got Dark Ritual. Yeah, so, so this is The Exorcist. And I'm playing with three, I believe. Yeah, three of these. Then the Demonic Tutor. Oh, another one I don't know. I'm pretty bad at this, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep score. So another one I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know it. Then Guardian Beast, of course. That's uh, the never-ending story. Yeah, I used to love this as a kid. I'm actually a primary school teacher. I've also uh, read this to my class. Such a beautiful, beautiful story. Well made. Unfortunately, the, the, the sequel was really bad. What else is new? This, of course, a no-brainer, Howling Mine. And oh, by the way, this is the Guardian Beast. So it's got a single Guardian Beast in there. So Howling Mine. So let me know if you play Underworld Dreams, what your like perfect list is. So a full place of Howling Mines. I think always with these type of decks, uh, where you're looking for specific components. And of course, Howling Mine is already really good with Underworld Dreams. Um, how, you know, Howling Mine is the, 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 the oil, right? The bread and butter of, of your deck. You need it to get your deck going. Uh, Single Island. Very cool. What movie is this? The Island? I know you've got a movie that's called The Island. Oh, this is this is harder than I thought. Okay, this one I know. Library of Alexandria. This, of course, Blade Runner. 
Ah, so well made. I love also this, the, the spine, you know, that they have made that one. Very, very cool. We've got Lightning Bolt. What movie is this? A plane and, a, and, and, and lightning, obviously, you know, but it doesn't ring a bell. Got to be some disaster movie, right? So we've got two bolts main. And no sideboard, actually. So just two edit extra for people who want to. So this was uh, Brazil, right? We talked about it with uh, Buddy. This one was the hardest to, to print because of the colors. I guess also the yellow and all the different colors of bluish and gray going on. And all of a sudden here, it gets very dark. Here it's very light. Then we've got Mishra's Factory. Yeah, this, this, this. I've seen this movie. I actually looked it back on YouTube after having a conversation with Buddy about one of his other alters. Uh, this is about like any any post apocalyptic uh, Earth. What else is new? Like sci-fi. And then the main character finds the remains of this battle robot, which is this guy, and then it it starts to come back alive and basically kill everybody. And there are only two of these, but the name I forgot. Of course, Alien, Max Emerald. I saw the new Alien not too long ago. Um, it was okay, it was okay. Then we've got the Max Jet. What movie is this? Wes Craven's Max Jet. Like, I know Wes Craven. I'm, I'm sure if I check the list afterwards, I'll be like, oh, of course, it's this movie. How could it be so dumb? But for now, I don't know. Max Pearl. Look at that art, it's so cool. Again, one I don't recognize. Should I be a little worried about my, my movie knowledge? Mox Ruby? Which one is this? With Bruce Willis. Hmm. It just doesn't ring a bell. This, of course, no-brainer Jaws, the Mock Sapphire. Da -da -da -da. Then we've got Power Sync. Again, one I don't know. Then we've got Recall. Yeah, so we talked about this one. Very nice. Very nice. Regrowth, so the little shop was in Chinatown, right? And I actually only saw the remake. I think I've never seen the one with um, with our actor friend here in it. I've only seen the one with um, oh, what's his? I'm so bad with names. I'm so bad. So this is of course uh, um, uh, Nicholson, but I uh, I don't know the other guy's name. You have to forgive me here. My my movie knowledge is bad. Okay, then we've got Soul Ring. Pretty cool. Jack Nicholson, of course. You see, the, the brain's working. It's just working quite slow. Uh, by the way, Soul Ring, I don't know. <laughs> Strip Mine, I know. This is June. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Wow, so cool. I once saw somebody play with uh, Strip Mine Altar with June. That was really sweet. Desert Altar with June as well. Sylvan Library, Princess Mononoke. So we've got two of these in the deck, I think. Yeah. This is one of my favorite uh, animated movies, I think. Then The Abyss. Yeah, this is The Lift. I think there's one Abyss main in the deck and two in the sideboard, if I'm not mistaken. And we've got Time Twister. Is this Time Cop, maybe? No, it's another movie. Back to the Future? Could it be Back to the Future? No. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really worse at this than I thought when I started. I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to know what two or two or three, but I'm actually missing a lot. Okay, this is Time Cop, of course, with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Damn, it's Van Damme. When I was, uh, phew, this was 20 years ago, I was traveling India, and uh, he was very popular. They had commercials, like he speaks four different languages. He does classical ballet. Damn, it's Van Damme. Like there were, the Indian people were crazy about him. Every movie he would be in, he was, was fantastic. Uh, okay, so we've got Underground Sea. 
Uh, which movie is this? Could be Planet of the Apes, right here. Could be E.T. maybe. But I think neither. I think it's something else. I'm so sorry for completely missing the mark. If you're a movie fan, you're really not happy with me. Uh, we've got two underground seats. Yeah, this one I know. Clockwork Orange. Absolute classic. I love it. That they go to the milk bar and they get ultra violent with the milk. Um, Stanley Kubrick. Masterpiece. Three, four on games. Of course, uh, the pillar of the deck. Think if you have if you have Underworld Dreams and and a couple of uh, uh, Howling Mines, you're good. You're good to go. One Howling Mine already is really helpful. Uh, Volcanic Island. How many of those? Is this Trimmers? I think this is Trimmers, right? That the one if you make with um, Kevin Bacon. I think that's it. Three of these. Oh, then we have more from the never ending story. Or is this? No, this is the one with the diamond. Uh, oh, the labyrinth. I think the labyrinth, this one. This is Wheel of Fortune, by the way. So one Wheel of Fortune. Johnny Mnemonic, Winds of Change. Some I really love this, uh, this movie. Four Winds of Change. And that's it. So these were the first 60 cards in the deck. And uh, now we're going to have a look at the sideboard. I think this is the sideboard. How did I organize it? No, this is actually, these are the extra cards. These are the hive tokens, by the way. And this is the sideboard. So we've got the abyss times two in the sideboard. We have a blue elemental blast in the sideboard as well, times two. We've got Boomerang. Oh, wait a minute. I got to guess the Blue Elemental Blast, right? Um, dang, I need more hints, people. Don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what this is. I don't, I'm, I don't know what this is. This looks like Star Trek, right? Yeah, yeah, this is Star Trek for sure. To boldly go where never, no one has ever gone before. Two Boomerangs. Uh, Gloom. Chainsaw Massacre, maybe? Very cool. I love this. This is a very cool cover. Gloom. Uh, oh, yeah. Maze of If. He's the Goblin King. This is again a labyrinth. So two Mazes of If in the sideboard, I believe. Yep. Oh, that power sink again. I still don't know. We've got one power sink in the side. Then we've got red elemental blasts. Which one is this? I already know when I'm going to check the list, I'm going to like feel so stupid. But for now, I don't recognize three red elemental blasts. And then we've got the hive. Wow, I love this. A huge cockroach is eating this woman. Get away from it. Get away from it all. Um, again, I don't know the movie. Probably should. I love this though. What a cool design. Absolutely stunning. So these are the 15 sideboard cards. And then we have, um, these are the hive tokens. So the one on wasps, which are more cockroaches in this uh, altered case. And then we also have the extra cards. So you can kind of tweak the deck any way you want. And there's, this one is um, the Goonies, the Hercules Recall. So that's one we haven't seen yet. Um, and then, I thought there were, yeah, Mirror Universe. That's another one. Oh, what's this movie called again? Okay, I'm just, I'm, it's in the brain. It's in the brain. The tip of the tongue, as they say. Um, yeah, I guess I recognize this scene, actually. Very, very cool. Okay, this was, um, this was the VHS deck, also known as the secret layer that Watsi should have made but never did. Um, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. How do you feel about this deck? How do you feel about these projects? Are you as excited as me or is it just me? Is there is, is there something wrong with me that I get so excited? Oh, by the way, I also put this video cassette in the background because it's a tape that a viewer sent me. Um, and this is an instruction videotape on, uh, on how to play magic. Look, 
a starter instructional video. It is, it is awesome, but I don't have a VCR, but still I'm going to keep it. I love this. It's a great memento. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching another episode right here on Timmy talks and, uh, yeah, let's go to the end scroll. Oh, but before we do, please take a moment to like, share and comment this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're enjoying these videos, please consider becoming a patron of the show. The patrons are really what keeps this channel afloat. You know, with your help, I've been able to spend more time into making videos like this, which I really love, uh, but they do cost a lot of time. So yeah, your support is really appreciated on the uh, on the Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, let's go uh, now to the end scroll. Man, I really need to work on my knowledge of movies. <laughs> Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.